So, now that I did this moon window, I don't know if you can see it's over there, but there's the tire, it came out. I'm ready to do the next moon, moon window, rather. It's gonna go here. Now, I'm kind of on the stone wall. There's boulders, I'm gonna build the stone wall over it. And there's like this area to the ground. And I wanna kind of do an experiment where I'm gonna build the moon window here. And then in the back, there's gonna be this hole. I'm gonna fill the hole with soil. Over here is another big boulder. And I'm gonna build that position. Sorry, the uh, stones around it in such a way that the, I'm gonna plant, I think a U so I can kind of manicure it. So there's gonna be a window and then a U buried in here. And then more support for the moon window around it. So I'm doing this now. I'm gonna plop the tire in and be ready to go. quintessential bushes that you shape. You see them a lot in British walled gardens where they cut them to like into a weary to be any kind of shape, the shape of an animal, the shape of a teapot. So I would like to really have it clean and shaped so it essentially will be a green wall behind the window like a, a uh, I think it'll be kind of a cool effect. It's this is a gamble because the bottom kind of balance these rocks a bit over the boulders. So it's not the most stable. I've come to terms that it might fall down eventually, but I think it'll be cool looking and I, I want to do it, even though I know that that is a possibility for anyone's watching, you could say that, which I know it's a little curious, but it might stay forever like the Leaning Tower of Pisa. So. I want to try and do what I can, and I'm more of an artist than an engineer, so we'll see. Instead of doing a traditional moon window, I mean, I'm doing it as the other moon windows as well. I'm doing the, the arches and everything, but in the back, instead of having a moon window, I'm gonna have a dome, so you don't see the road behind you. So that is a little bit of a change. So it's technically not even a moon window, but for the record, it kind of is. of this project that I found in the past is doing a, a gradual um, incline towards the center, towards the, um, the keystone. So I decided to do some chalk lines to kind of give me a frame of what I should be doing, where I should be leaning the stones towards the center. And um, I found it to be very useful.
as I was creating the wall, I was kind of leaning it towards the tire, uh, trying to match what I've been doing on the sides, uh, only on the back to make the dome shape. Now, I mean, if you're doing this and you want to make a dome, you, you might want to look into support structures. I did, decided to be a little lazy and not build one. At this point, I thought maybe I could lean the tire a little bit in the back to get that clean arch going from the back, but um, I ended up not doing that. arch I use this special mortar it's a uh, it drives super fast it's a lot harder to work with for the regular mortar I use a structural 80 pound mortar mix now this drives super fast so with normal mortar I just dump it the whole bag in and mix it with water this I do maybe five scoops at a time and I just make it a little bit wet and then bring it over and by the time I bring it over it kind of dries into that kind of putty texture you want when you do mortar but it's so fast drying um that it's honestly it's a little bit difficult to handle but I really recommend using this for the arch to get like that secure uh structural integrity that you kind of want for the arch again it's None of it's ne even necessary. You don't even need to use mortar. If you are really good with um, chiseling the stone, you can do it dry. Um, I just don't cut the stone so much. I mean, sometimes I hammer a piece off here and there, but I really, I, I, I kind of even like the look of mortar. I know most masons don't, but I think it, I like the lines. I'm a little bit, my taste is a little bit unusual in that way. So it's really up to you. There's a lot of ways of doing all of this, but this.
my arches, I have a lot of problems finding a keystone. On this one, I found this keystone. Now, if you're, you know, cutting the stones yourself, it's much easier. But for me, I kind of mostly just go see what the quarry has and pick a lot of stones. And then I save a pile of key shape stones. And what a key shape is, basically, it's like a triangle with like the tip of the triangle chopped off. And what it does, it supports the whole arch. So it, it takes a lot of the weight. So a little bit about an arch. So when you're doing an arch like this, there's a couple of very important factors. The keystone, that like triangle to support the sides and the bottom needs to be like a good foundation so water doesn't sit below and move the stones around, uh, breaking the structure. So a good foundation. Uh, and you wanna look up your frost line to see like how deep you wanna go depending on what zone you are to get a good foundation. That said, this what worries me about this particular project is it's on top of boulders. So who knows, there might be a lot of movement and this might fall down and that's kind of what I'm worried about. Another thing is support on the side to handle the weight on the side. So there's another factor. But to be perfectly honest, keystones are very important, but on a small arch like this, it's not the end of the world not to have a perfect one or even one at all. If you go to the Mycenaean site in Greece, which is about a couple thousand years before the Iliad was written, so Homer wrote the Iliad. It's called the first golden age of Greece. There is an arch. It's not a huge arch without a keystone. And so there is documentation, a thing standing a very long time without a keystone and even arches. So, I mean, it's like a pre arch arch because with an arch, you do need a keystone. But that said, this is a small structure, it's a tire. So, you know, I guess you're taking a gamble if you don't make things perfectly, but it probably is going to be okay. So when you get further to the top before the keystone, that's when things get a little bit more difficult and you have to kind of keep on looking and paying attention to what you're doing. Uh, I found that the lines really helped that I drew at this stage. So you kind of just have to really get the gradual um, leaning towards the keystone. Also, it's like before I kind of eyeball things a bit and I just put the rock down with the cement and I don't really think about it so much. With this, you're gonna have to do it like place a stone, place another stone, place another stone, see if they all work together, then put your mortar. And so you have to do like a lot of, I always do a lot of dry set, um, setting the rock before I put in the mortar. So at the top, it's hard to put the mortar on the side of the rock sometimes. So sometimes I put the mortar just on top over it when it doesn't stick. So that's kind of helpful, you know, you're, it's kind of really easy when it's horizontal. You, you lay your mortar, it's a nice bed of mortar, then you put your stones, but it gets more and more difficult when you get vertical for the mortar to sit on the rocks and everything to be clean. So it gets a little messy uh, at the top, or at least I had trouble.
crazy. I ended up just putting stone, leaning it forward towards the tire. I didn't need to move the tire to, for extra support. It was a little bit like that game you play stacking things. I had a few rocks fall in, but it kind of worked out and I put some rocks on top to support it. And then I was ready to take out the tire. So when it's time to take out the actual tire, um, I did hear that you could use different contraptions, like you could blow up the tire and then deflate it or use these ring things. On TikTok, I got a lot of comments. I just, I keep it kind of simple. Maybe it's wrong. I just take five minutes to take out the, the tire and that's that. And I've been recycling this tire for a long time. I kind of like that I, um, it's a recycled thing. It's a, a tool that, you know, is for the landfill and I'm just reusing it like this. I don't want any more gadgets attached with that. So I'm probably wrong, but I guess I'm stuck in my ways. So I'm very proud of how this moon window came out. Now this has been, like I said before, a little bit different than the other ones because I domed it. So you see from the other side and it has the hole which I'm about to fill. So I'm very proud of it and I think I might do another one. I've been wheeling the tire around everywhere trying to figure out where my next one is. Um, I also had a comment from a TikToker. <laughs> we have a TikTok channel to um, put some fire element in there but I decided to do something kind of cool which have a, a moon window maybe do something with water, earth over there. This one could be earth because the plant will grow from it. That's wind, maybe because it's allowing wind. And this one I was thinking of maybe doing something like a um, more permanent chandelier type thing for fire. And this is a very fiery section of the outdoor kitchen. So I hope you enjoyed and please subscribe and um, look at more videos. I'm gonna now fill it up with some dirt and plant it out. So let me just say this, as far as structure, putting dirt in between the rocks like this is not the best idea because theoretically it can expand and contract and move the stones around and push them out of place during the winter when the moisture gets in and then it freezes over. That said, I have a few stone planters and it hasn't happened to them yet. As far as plants um, are concerned, I could have ordered a U from a, um, a specialty nor nursery, but none of the local nurseries carry a U because the deer can eat them. Now that's not a concern for this little nook, but the nursery didn't have any U. So I found this um, plant at Walmart. Uh, I'll have to get back to you with what it is, but it's it could freeze, um, it could survive below 30 uh, Fahrenheit, uh, negative 30 Fahrenheit, so that's pretty good. Another thing about planting things in planters, which, which essentially this is, is that you have to go a couple zones, like two zones, they say, um, <clears throat> colder, than what you are because it's up in the air. So this one should work out pretty well. It should fill this this whole nook nicely. It'll be a little bit more rugged and it's also a lot more yellow than the U, but I think it'll be a cool effect. I am a little on the fence about the Buddha. That said, a lot of this construction has been inspired, especially with the plants growing inside by um, my visit to Angkor Wat. So please let, let me know in the comments below if you like the Buddha or not. And also if I should do more moon doors and moon windows. I'm rolling around this tire around my property, trying to figure that out right now.